Hey, Kelsey here, and today we're going to go over the absolute basics in Inkscape. I'm going to start this as part of a series, and so today we're only going to focus on basic shapes, so rectangles, circles, and ellipses, some basic buttons and their functions, and how you'll use these to create your own SVGs. You're going to start by downloading Inkscape. This is a free software, and you can find it at inkscape.org, and I'll link it below. I'm downloading mine for Mac, and I'm actually just updating mine to the newest version. There aren't too many changes from what I have, but I wanted to make sure we have the updated version to do this tutorial. Once you download it, you'll open a new blank canvas, and it will look like this. In the center is your frame, but you can work outside that box. These two buttons up here are two of your most important buttons. On top you have select, and right below it you have nodes. We'll go over nodes in a little while, and I'll also link my blog post from last week that goes over all the definitions. Right below this we have what you see is a rectangle or a square. This is to draw your basic rectangle shape. Right below that you see a circle or an ellipses, and below that you see a pentagon and a star. I'm not going to get into the 3D shapes or the swirls, and we will get into lines and text in another video. I want to start off as basic as possible. And again, you can learn about all these buttons on the blog post. So let's click on the square. And as you can see, you no longer have an arrow. You have a little rectangle. And we're just going to draw a, a line. You do this by clicking and dragging down. You see mine's kind of rounded. We're going to go ahead and change that. So right up at the top, it says... Rx and Ry. I'm going to set mine back to zero. I actually rarely use this, but this is how you round out your corners on your rectangle or your square. I went ahead and I changed the color just by selecting it. As you see, the arrow is chosen, and then I picked a color from the bottom. The colors at the bottom are how you change your colors for all of your objects. Now to change the size of this, you're just going to grab a corner and while holding your mouse, you can move it around. So as you see, I grabbed a corner and now I'm moving it. It changes the shape in every direction, so it's not uniform. If I want it to be uniform like I just did, you hit control while you move it around. I'm going to make this pretty skinny and we're going to make a flower today. So this is going to be the stem of our flower. Very simple. Now I like to work when everything is nodes, so we're gonna to go to path and change object to path. And what this does is it creates nodes in the four corners. So these are the points that your Cricut is reading to cut. So if we change it to nodes that we learned about in the top left-hand corner, you see there are these little squares. And now we can change those squares to be rounded, or it'll change the shape. We can make the lines in between wiggly, or we can add nodes to add in different points. I'm going to keep everything nice and straight for our stem. This is going to be a simple flower. So now we have our stem done. Let's go ahead and grab a circle. This is going to be the center of our flower. So here it says circles or ellipses. And as you can see, mine is coming up as this like half circle. So we're going to change it. I'm going to change the end and the start to zero up at the top. And now it is a full circle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit select. And you can change the size here with W and H. If it's unlocked, that means that those are not going to automatically change together. So you'll have to do them individually. And if you want them to be uniform, you would lock it. So I'm just changing it to a different color for our center. And again, that object to path so that it has nodes. Now you can resize it just like we did before. And I'm holding control so that it resizes uniformly. Now our next step is we're going to duplicate that center and pull it off. So I'm just dragging, just like you would in Cricut Design Space. And now I'm going to make another ellipse. So I'm making an oval this time. So when I'm dragging out, I'm just making it a little bit longer. I'm turning off my nodes here so that it freely moves. When you have that turned on, it snaps to nodes. So it makes it easier to line things up. But we're going to turn that off. So I'm making a longer oval. And I'm going to change the color to yellow. And now we're going to duplicate it. Let's drag it just to the edge of that circle. And now we're going to align these, just like you would in Design Space. So to find the Align panel, you're going to go to Object. And down at 
the bottom, you will find align and distribute. And now we have this little panel off to the side. This is just like design space where it centers, put things off to the right. So I'm just grabbing the two yellow right now and I'm centering them vertically. So I'm not making them further together, but I'm centering them vertically. The next step in our petals is to union them. So I'm gonna go up to path while I have them both clicked and I'm going to do object to path and then union. So now this is one piece. It's almost like it's one object. So we're going to go ahead and center this to the circle in the middle. And now I'm gonna duplicate only the yellow pieces so that we can make more petals. So what I'm gonna do is use these little arrows up top and I rotated them so that they're still centered. And now I'm unioning again so that I have all four petals together. Now I'm going to duplicate. They are right on top of each other, so I'm just gonna grab the top one, double click so that you see a rotating arrow. And now I'm just going to rotate those top petals right over so that it looks like I have more than four petals. Now I have eight. And I'm gonna duplicate again, double click to see the turning arrow and rotate. It doesn't have to be perfect. We are just making a basic flower. All flowers are different. None of them are perfect. We're going to drag over everything just like you would in design space to grab more than one object. Path, union. Now it's all one piece. It's all of your flower. We're going to change that back to yellow and send it to the back. You can do that with these four buttons up here. All right. So now our center is ahead of it. You can see that the petals are kind of far away from the center. So I'm gonna make my center nice and big in between those petals. And then I'm gonna resize my flower to be a little bit smaller. Do this while everything is grabbed if you're resizing. So I still feel like that center seems odd, so I'm gonna make it a little smaller again, just the center. And I'm gonna put it right into the center of my flower. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because flowers aren't perfect. And now I change to nodes. Now we're just gonna click on each individual node that's right at the bottom. Remember, these are the points your Cricut's cutting to. So I'm just clicking one and dragging it up. Clicking one and dragging it up. Making the petals a little bit longer so they cut a little bit deeper into that flower. And now it looks like a flower. So now I can make the center just a little bit smaller. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna go over to my align and distribute and just center those two things together. I'm gonna go back and look at the nodes, pull them in a little bit more, and you can do this until the petals look right to you. But when you're playing with this, make sure to play around with the nodes, see what all the buttons do at the top. Over on the right with the line distribute, we'll get to that in another video. Now you see my stem is way too long, and so I'm just gonna shorten it a little bit at the bottom. And now we have a little stem and our flower. Let's duplicate that back send it back one so we still see our center and then like before we're going to rotate it ever so slightly but we're not going to union these these are going to be two different layers when we send it to our Cricut you can change the colors if you want to have two different colors every time you change a color think of that like a color on the mat it's going to send it over to Cricut separately so that is how you use all of those shapes so we already started with our top panel and you did a great job Let's go ahead and save the file as an SVG. You can save it however you'd like. Just put a name that you'll remember when you upload it to Cricut. Once you go over to Cricut, you'll upload that same file you just made and add it to your canvas. So now we have a flower. You can change the colors here. You can change the size here. And as you see, you have four different things grouped together and it's named what we named our file. So if I hit make it, you'll see I have three different mats, just the same colors that we chose. So let's go ahead and cut and assemble. So I did three flowers that I cut two of the same size and I made one a little bit bigger. And so let's go ahead and assemble it. So I'm gonna grab my two bigger flower pieces and put a little bit of glue in the center because I'm just going to attach the centers together. You don't wanna put it on your petals because you want those to be free flowing. And again, align them as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. All flowers are different. So if it doesn't line up beautifully and the spacing isn't perfect, that is okay. 
my glue dries relatively quickly. So after I have the two pieces put together, we can attach our center. And as you can see, the center for the bigger one is a little bit bigger than the other. So you can tell a difference. My biggest takeaway when you are creating SVG files is to just play around and make mistakes. Start super basic, make a circle, try layering it with a couple different colors, maybe add in a wave on it, but just start basic. Don't try to be crazy. All I'm doing here is just curling up my ends of my flower with my bone tool to make it look a little bit more rounded for when we put it on my card. So there we go, we have our first flower done. We're gonna do the same step for the next two flowers, so I will speed through these a little bit. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate you watching and learning with me. Also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, whatever your social media of choice is. And also check out my Etsy shop just in case you wanted to look at some of the SVGs I have already made. So I'm just attaching all of my flowers here and the centers. Super simple, but they're really cute. They weren't too difficult to put together. And it really, when you look at it, it's only a rectangle and a couple of circles and ovals. So let's just assemble this on my card. This is a basic card I got from Michaels. It's nothing special. I didn't cut it myself. I just had these sitting around. You can arrange these however you want. I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and it would be really cool to see you make a card where on your stems you add some leaves or maybe some grass at the bottom. I want to see you get creative. Don't be scared to mess up and make mistakes when you're making SVGs. That's how you learn. Thank you so much for watching today and creating these simple daisies that we put on a card. And you created the SVG yourself. So awesome job. Happy crafting.